Panthers leading by 11. And for more on tonight's game, let's swing back to our Mark Zuma. And Jim and Hubie will be back. They'll have the second half of the Sixers and Houston Rockets coming up. April 19th is the night. You'll see it right here on PRISM, the retirement of number six, the number worn by one Julius Irving. And outside the spectrum, they'll erect a statue of the Doc, a bronze statue that you can have. A much smaller version, of course. Here's more. Julius Irving retires. And what are we left with? Highlights, for sure. Memories of great moments both as an athlete and as a man. But unless you're lucky enough to own maybe a pair of Dr. J's autographed sneakers, little of what remains is, shall we say, tangible. That's where this comes in, a replica of a bronze statue of Julius Irving, scheduled to be unveiled at the Spectrum April 19th, the night the Sixers retire Doc's number six. A limited number of these statues, 300 in all, has been made available to the public by Center Vitali Associates, a marketer of fine sports art out of North Carolina. The firm's president, Walter Council, is selling each of these miniatures for $1,876. The money will go in part toward the funding of the larger bronze statue that will be on display permanently outside the spectrum. Council's firm claims these smaller statues are not trophies as such, but rather art investments. He points to a sculpture his company commissioned of Aristides, the first ever horse to win the Kentucky Derby. Like the Dr. J statue, 300 smaller versions of Aristides were sold to the public for $1,875. Two years later, claims counsel, one of these pieces was sold at auction for more than twice the price. Uh, we made that piece, uh, that particular sponsorship, available only to a select group of people in Kentucky, so the market was not very informed as to the availability of it. The addition was still open. It was uh, sitting in around uh, 200 pieces at the time, and one of these pieces was sold at auction in New York, where they weren't aware of the piece, for over $4,500. So you can see this very fast escalating piece of art. Uh, the value comes in that all of our pieces are tied to a major masterpiece. If you have one of my small pieces, your name is on the base of the actual statue itself. And what determines value of these pieces is when the 300 pieces is sold, what can you go out and buy one for? And if you try to buy one from someone whose name is on the base, you're not going to get it, or, or else you're going to have to pay a very big price for it. And that's, that's essentially what makes them go up so fast. The council says he has an exclusive agreement with Irving. No one else can produce a bronze statue of him. As for this model, council says when they first consulted with Doc, he said he wanted a dignified pose, one that would show him going for a dunk. When we do a great athlete like this, all great athletes, and Irving included, they have a signature of uh, what they're famous for. And Doc, I think anybody that's ever seen him play, the first thing you notice, or one of the first things, is the size of his hands and his ability to control the ball. Uh, he was the first uh, acrobat, so to speak, in, in professional sports, in professional basketball, and we felt that uh, his signature had to be going in flight for a dunk with the ball in one hand. Doc agreed. And that's where the pose came from. Uh, the sculptor and people in my company looked over thousands of still photographs, videotape footage, and that was the pose that we came up with. And that was the one that uh, we finally settled on, and that's what Doc wanted. Council's company has made inroads with other great athletes concerning the creation of similar sculptures, and that helped to create Doc's interest in the project. A project involving Walter Payton, a project involving Johnny Bench, a project project in, involving uh, Pete Rose. Uh, so even though it's not something, you know, I sat down and thought about before, once introduced to the concept, uh, I thought it would be an appropriate thing to be involved in um, because in listening to the other names and looking at the other people, uh, I cite them as peers and um, constituents uh, with their, in their respective sports. And, uh, you know, maybe it was something that uh, well, could be an exciting thing to be a part of. The uh, input that we had was uh, uh, very simple, um, accept or reject the proposals. And indeed, before arriving at this finished product, there were some proposed models that Irving rejected. When he first saw it, he said his left thumb was too long, and we measured it, and he was right. His thumb was too long. We changed a little bit on the bridge of his nose, and that essentially was it. Uh, we're, we're fairly detail-oriented and detail-conscious, and we had 
photographed Doc extensively, and so there was not a whole lot of room for error once we brought him the finished product up. We knew it was very close. And it'll be as close as you can get to the real statue, which will encompass 13 and a half feet of hollow-casted bronze, weighing close to a thousand pounds. But you could have this smaller version, a work of art by sculptor Barney Bright, for $1,876. Contact the 76ers if you're interested. We're at halftime tonight here on Prism. 76ers and the Houston Rockets and the Sixers right now leading it 56 to 45. The Rockets behind coach Bill Fitch. Winners of their last two, but like many, says Fitch, hey, we're struggling on the road. We could use a win tonight at the Spectrum, but they were without Akeem Olajuwon. So they go to their backup, who started Joe Barry Carroll inside right away. And they go to him outside, swinging the ball well, going to the weak side, opposite side of the court. And he scores from there. Sixers, though, go to Mike Jaminski, and he delivers. Nice little move in traffic, spins it off the glass left-handed. Sixers up early by four. The Rockets, though, get a nice lift from their inside role player who gets a garbage dunk. Jim Peterson goes up and in for two, and Jimmy Lineham's team, though, was still leading. And then to the Hendersons we go. David, you got to hit this shot, and he does. Sticks the jumper, does a lot of other things, too. Defensively, rebounds, uh, some things away from the ball. And uh, one of, I guess, what, three pointers in the first half? Gerald Henderson, 56-45 Philadelphia. Mike Jaminski right now leads the scoring parade for the 76ers. And we were right, three three-point field goals. Cliff Robinson, Charles Barkley, and David Henderson following also. And for the Houston Rockets, as we check their leading scores, their starting center, Joe Barry Carroll. Purvis short nicely off the bench. Jim Peterson and Cornbread Maxwell. NBA scoreboard at halftime. The Nets are leading Boston right now. It is 62-52 to 52 New Jersey. And right now at halftime at Madison Square Garden. Dallas leading New York. Remember the Knicks again behind the Sixers in Washington in the race for the playoffs. Detroit at uh, L.A. later on tonight. That's it for 76ers halftime tonight. I'm Mark Zumoff. Time permitting, we'll go courtside. We'll have the plays and player of the game. Again, that'll be after tonight's game. Stay with us now, Jimmy Hubie with second half Sixers Houston coming up.